according to the Department of Justice system, every year, more than half a million inmates are released. But what happens after that? This is a picture of a young man named Khalif Browder. He was arrested at 16 years old, who spent three years in one of the most notorious correctional facilities in the country, Rikers Island. After spending two of those years in solitary confinement, his case was dismissed. It wasn't very long after his release, he committed suicide at the age of 22. The criminal justice was meant to protect people, but it seemed like we've forgotten that inmates are people too. Who will protect the non-offenders when they are released back into the world? Just because they made a mistake or two, does it mean they don't matter anymore? Even though individuals should be held accountable for their actions, the justice system is failing to prevent the cycle of reincarceration continuing to overcrowd their facilities and ignoring the mental health of illness during and after discharge. I have done my research. I have researched former inmates that the criminal justice system has failed time and time again. I have watched several interviews, including the Netflix series, The Khalif Browder Story documentary. I've also had a friend when I was younger that was sent to prison for selling marijuana. He actually was released soon after for good behavior, but he was later sent back for the same charges. I asked him, why would you risk going back? Didn't you learn anything? He said, I didn't have food to eat. No one would hire me. So let's get into this. I will first discuss the reasons for incarceration, and then I will discuss the effects of overcrowding. Lastly, I will discuss the inmates and former inmates that deals with mental illness. The criminal justice system was created for individuals to be punished for breaking the law, for resulting to return from their mistakes, and mis then making better choices once they return. But the former inmates that is discharged from prison have two out of three chances of returning. Why is that? To survive a prison, the individuals must get a job to support themselves, right? According to Kalut and Kauf, writers of out of prison and out of work employment among former incarcerated people stated analysis showed that formerly incarcerated people are employed at a rate of over 27 percent here is a graph that shows the employment rate of former inmates is higher than the unemployment rate during the historical great depression and that's just in 2008 can you imagine the rate now here's the great depression at 25%, and here is the formerly incarcerated at 27%. As identified, an unidentified source stated, we are facing a large number of applicants each month. This is just an easy way to beat the applicants out. So no money, no food, what now? They might as well go back, right? Now that I have discussed the reincarceration rate due to the unemployment, I want to talk about overcrowding. Prison overcrowding is one of the key contributing factors to poor prison conditions around the world. Even we have heard of prisons being overcrowded, but we don't hear the effects of it. 22 national prison systems hold more than double their capacity between 150% and 200 over capacity. Overcrowding can result in increasing rate in violence, self-harm, and suicide rates. Let's look at this quick interview of a former inmate that was in an overcrowded prison. Nobody plans on going to jail. I was just angry. Our whole pod was crowded. It was 32 people in our crowd pod, and that's way really overcrowded. It was supposed to be one person to cell, but then it was really two people per cell. It sucks whenever it's overcrowded because you gotta wait for everything. People are just getting fights over like, like simple things like the phone. Like if I get overcrowded, everybody would always argue over the phone, especially at night. I mean, when we the first day there, there was a fight, and then after that, there was a couple fights. The, like our first night there, they had to move this guy out because this guy here thought I knocked out of a socket. The Federal Bureau of Prison Report overcrowding increases the use of double, even sometimes triple bunk 
longer waiting, like for showers, bathrooms, and telephones, not being able to treat the sick effectively, and most importantly, increased inmate to staff ratio. Here's a picture of the worldwide prison population. As you can see, the United States is well above Russia, South Africa, Poland, Nigeria. On the top of the prison population, growing 9.5% growing in 2006 through 2011, the capacity of increase 7%, which only shows that it couldn't keep up. Now that we have learned about the overcrowding in the criminal justice system, I would lastly discuss the mental illness that affects former inmates when we are when they are discharged. From the beginning, when people enter the prison system, their activities, the, the system purposely used to strip a person's identity. The, this includes their name, decision making, capabilities, and self esteem. Recent studies suggest that at least 17% of inmates in jail the, and prisons have serious mental illness. How are they keeping them obedient while they're safe? Medications that is prescribed to inmates when they are discharged, but if he or she fails to take their medication, they tend to self-medicate with alcohol or street drugs. Who is monitoring this? Let's look at the screen for a moment. These are the type of disorders that they may go through, depressive, schizophrenic, um, post-traumatic stress, uh, any other type of anxieties, personal disorder. And like I said before, 17% of the total inmate population has a mental health diagnosis. In conclusion, we have discussed the cycle of re-incarceration, people <coughs> leaving, leaving just to come Back due to not being able to survive in the real world. We discussed the effects of these inmates with facility crowding its inmates. And lastly, we discussed inmates with mental health issues. Like mentioned before, even though individuals should be held accountable for their actions, the criminal justice system is failing to failing the cycle of reincarceration, unnecessary overcrowding and is not addressing the mental health illnesses after discharge. So I want to close in saying this. Former inmates are released from prison to get another chance to do good in society. Yet the effects of being in a poor criminal justice system prevents them from achieving that goal. They need to do better. We need to do better.